Hi guys and um, welcome back to the DSA Gardening Podcast. I know it's been a long time since I made the previous episode. Looking at the analytics on my phone now, it was actually May 26th, 2021. So over a year and a half ago now. Um, Covid really knocked me for six. I just lost all passion in social media side of stuff and the podcast side. Instagram went wayward. YouTube, I think I've done a one-off special since then, just explaining where we are. Other than that, I've posted every now and then on Instagram, but even Facebook has fell behind. Like My part in Long Care Legends has dropped from what it used to be. I don't do as much on there now, but I'm getting back into it. Um, and It was just rough. So, after messages and a few other people mentioned it to me, I'll give a couple of them a shout actually. The two J's, J Chillingworth, a good friend, amazing guy. He has asked me a few times to bring it back. Um, so this one's dedicated to you, J. And then Sam Jirocchi from J Rock's Lawn Care podcast. Um, I've travelled a lot recently and I practically listened to every episode I had. And it's kind of given me the bug back. So thanks again for that, Sam, J whatever you go by um, there seems to be many names out there for you so this is just a quick one to come back it's actually going to be titled Road to Soltex um, where 8 days and 12 hours or something like that according to the little app thing that they send you away from Soltex starting um, to try and get myself back into the social media side of stuff I'm going to be there the whole time, I'm getting there the day before, so there's no rushing about. I'm going to actually have a look around the show, I'm not going to be bothered about filming, I'll get plenty of photos like always, but I'm not going to attempt to film anything, I'm not going to attempt to even do much like YouTube or Instagram with it, I'm just going to get photos for myself to enjoy and make maybe a little film reel with it. So with that, um, I want to just make a little like comeback type podcast thing um so as i say a bit saltex so if anyone's there come over and say hello you can't miss me as always um i think most of the people that listen to this know who i am anyway if you don't just look out for the big ginger guy in a hat with a big beard i can stick out um other than that obviously this is a gardening podcast about what we do as a business, the business is still running, we're bigger than ever, uh, we've kind of changed, we don't do as many private now, um, I think we're probably down to like less than 30 regular private customers, um, mainly due to the fact that they was just becoming spotted everywhere so the issue was with the economy crashing and all that type of stuff that's been going on for the last year um we was losing customers in areas and we was only building to say have two or three we don't advertise for work because as soon as we lost their spot we filled it with commercial or other work that we had um and so we couldn't like find other customers in those areas so not finding customers in areas meant we were spending some days only getting to free lawns at 25 to 27 pound just getting to three of them just for the amount of time it was taking to travel between um, some of the areas are quite a rough area around us so having at least someone with the van at all times because we would need multiple tools out and be no point back and forth back and forth unlocking it so someone would have to hang around the van um, it became just silliness so we dropped a lot of customers um, even the really good ones we liked in those areas that we'd had for years, we'd drop them and like move them on. It's not something we wanted to do, but we had to do it because it wasn't worth going out there and we wasn't going to advertise in that area to get more customers because we can't guarantee we're going to get those customers in the better areas um, local to them. There is a few outliers in that. Um, if they listen, because I know a couple of customers who listen, you know who you are, you know why you're an outlier in that. Um, and there's no favouritism or anything, you just that type of customer that allows us to do what we want to do when we want to do it, so it works out perfect for us and you don't really complain about us having to maybe move you about if we have a commercial contract to go to. 
Um, the pond side has got bigger this year. We've done quite a lot. We do contracts all over the country now, uh, mainly maintenance. We've done some installs. If you follow us on Instagram, you'll have seen them. Um, grass cutting wise, we haven't taken on any more commercials. We've done a lot more commercial car parks and leaf cleanups and uh, yearly contracts in place for them. Not so many grass cuts, but we have recently invested in a much larger zero turn. I don't know, I can't actually remember if we had the ride on in the last podcast, but if we didn't, we also have a 54 inch ride on tractor as well, Husqvarna one. I think we got it after the last podcast, if I remember correctly. Um, that has been brilliant, but it's just not as manoeuvrable, so we went for a zero turn. If you see us at Soltex, you'll see which one we have, if you haven't already seen it on social media, and there will be a podcast after Soltex just on equipment and what we've changed into over the years. Um, we still only really use the Mountfield and Steger mowers. We do have the Toro, but that's because we do some very large lawns now, and the Mountfields and the uh, Stegers are perfect, but they just aren't big enough to do flying cuts, especially on a commercial ground that's on a 28 day cut where you're just taking a few centimeters off it and throwing it with a side shoot. The 30 inch is just quicker. That's the only reason we have it. If Mountfield or Steger come out with a 30, we'll be the first at the door for it. Um, and again, with the ride-ons, that was mainly a money thing, uh, because the ride-on we have, actually, we could have got it in the Stiga version, but not for this price. Uh, which, again, I'll go over that when we come to the podcast about that. Um, so, yeah, we have tracked now. I don't even know if we had the trailer. We must have done, because I did a Christmas podcast about it, and we was just doing the Christmas trees then, so I must have had the trailer. So, we still have the trailer... We've not upgraded the van, I know we one of the podcasts I did mention was going to upgrade the van. Um, Covid tax came in, vans are now more, you could probably pay what we paid for ours now with an extra 80,000 miles on it, that's a crazy thing. Um, what else really changed? Nothing much has changed in life really since the last podcast, working life obviously. Um, except for like the, the different type of work, but we still still are the same business. Um, we've changed uniforms, we've changed branding slightly. Still the same logo, um, just general stuff like that. But a, a little bit of it's on social media. As I say, I kind of fell out with social media for a bit. Um, so my goal is to I've also now got my studio back. Um, so I can record a lot easier. My goal is to try and aim for one every two weeks. Um, I want to go to weekly um, and as soon as I work out how to, my tech brain isn't firing properly at the moment, I'm going to be streaming these to YouTube as well. They'll be with a lawn mowing simulator background because obviously you just don't want to have a general background. The Elon Mowing Simulator may be recorded separately, so I won't be commenting on anything that goes on in there, so if I crash, just comment on it. Um, because that kind of like means I have to be concentrating on two things at once, and I'm not that good at that. Uh, but they will be available on YouTube as well. The podcast I found out recently had actually appeared on Apple iTunes and Apple Podcasts. Um, I had no idea about this, I just got a report saying that it had been listened to on there um, and I can't actually look for some reason. Whenever I search myself on there I can't find it but whenever people do they have found it. Um, Spotify, it's going to be on there regularly as usual, it's the easiest place to upload it. I have spoken to Amazon about getting it on the Amazon podcasts filter in a sense, I don't know how that works, as I say I've been out of it for a bit. Um, and I'm hoping to try and grow it. I'm working out to get guests on. I know in the last podcast I'd arrange for guests. You guys know who you are. I still do want you to come on. I will even come to you and record with you if needs be. Now, COVID's kind of gone. We can travel again. I know it's been like 18 months in the podcast. 
but there is still huge, huge, huge after effects from that. Not only within the supply line, but prices, everything through the roof. But that's for another podcast because this is a welcome back and a road to Saltex. So in the next two weeks, I'll be in Saltex. I'm going to be away for quite a bit in that time, so I'm going to pre record a podcast for after Saltex at Saltex Um, because I'm going to be away as soon as I get back so that will be put up just then Um, hopefully I can talk about some of the new stuff I've seen I know there's a few companies going to be there that are going to be showing off some different different uh, scale of uh, battery equipment from the GIE in America from what's being shown not including DeWalt um, there's been shown some huge things coming from Ego, from Crass, and the other company, Kramer, I think it is, that hold me to that. Uh, but all with like 50 minute charge, and even Ego having a 96 battery charger, and a large battery that charges a small battery, so you can charge the large battery at home and then have your small batteries charging from that in your vehicles it's like a you plug it in parked up like you would a ev vehicle but it's actually charging a large battery in the back of the vehicle that will power all your tools which i know is part of the z6 program so they can have the zero turn switch over to commercial um as i say we've up until recently worked quite close with stiga i hope to get that back they now have the gyro controlled joystick mower out. They are doing a professional range in that. We still use the Stiga battery range practically every day. Um, so there's nothing much changed there and we'd really love to have a go on some of them. And as soon as I get my social media going back up again, I will be in touch with the companies we used to deal with just to see if they'd like to do anything with us again. I've actually in the in the last couple of like 18 months they've actually been buying filming and recording equipment even though I don't do it anymore I still wanted to get to do it but I've just not had the passion hopefully by doing a couple of these podcasts and catching back up on that sort of stuff it'll all come back so I understand that this one's a bit of a ramble I do apologise for that if you've got any questions on my Instagram DSA Gardening, Facebook DSA Gardening YouTube DSA Gardening just drop me a message if you've got any questions or if you want to actually be a guest. Uh, anyone and everyone's welcome. Uh, we're going to be doing some more off topic ones that will maybe a little bit where I'm going to try and get people on that have a different opinion to me, i.e., battery to the people that still think fuel is the only way to go. There is, in certain terms, fuel is the only option, but 99% of the time, there is a battery option for it now even though we're not going full battery and we won't but there is an option out there and I totally can go with them but there's some people that just don't think battery is nowhere near it when clearly it's at least 99% of the way there for the majority of general gardening Um, I want to have something like a more of a debate thing because that is something that you don't see in this podcast genre genre the word the gardening podcast era it's more just people talking just having a general chat and i prefer to try and get a debate style system going on even if it's just debating mower brands i.e we're still running the nine-year-old um mountfield 511 pd still runs fine still only had cables still on the same drive there's no wheels left of the ground away uh, but same on same drive, same engine, um, so it's doing absolutely fine. We don't use it as much as mainly, as I said at the beginning of the podcast, we don't do as much small grass. I, it's probably only done 40 odd hours this year, but we do have one, two, three, four, five of them always, as well as that one. So it's most of us mowers don't get that many hours on them now because there's always another mower to do the task and it's like mow musical chairs on the morning I just get out the one that I think wants to come out that day in a sense um, same as a brawler that I'll have done 25 hours this year if that um, the battery probably about 15 hours the other two the Toro 15-20 hours 
Um, and then the Silver Mount Field, which is four years old now. That's probably done the most. That's probably looking at over 100 hours. And then the tractor had done 30. Uh, but we don't know on that one because the hour meter was being very funny. It was an older tractor. I've done a lot of modifications to it. Um, and we've only had a zero turn for a couple of weeks now at this point. That's done three hours as that. And a lot of that was loading practice, getting it on and off the trailer and getting it into the unit. So grass cutting isn't a biggest thing anymore it never really was but it used to be a bigger income source but now it's closer to probably 55% of the company where it used to be about 80 um, those numbers I'd have to double check um, so I've totally gone on a tangent now I forgot where I was so yes yeah, so I want to get people on to try and debate stuff talk about uh, commercial non-commercial in the commercial market and all that type of stuff. Um, Soltex, I'll be there in eight days. If anyone's going to be at Soltex and they want to say hi, come and say hi. If you're going to be there the day before, look out for social media because we're going to be having a meal the night before. So the Tuesday I'll be arriving, we're going to be having a meal the night before. If quite a few people do message they want to come, we'll find somewhere that can seat us. If not, we're probably going to eat at the, um, oh, what is it called now, it's within the NEC site at Birmingham anyway, it's next to the Miller and Carter, but I'm just not quite sure uh, what it's called now, it's just a little steakhouse, it's one of those general ones, I just, my brain's not working at the minute, so we're going to be there having something to eat on the evening, after we've been to the hotel and got checked in and such, so... Other than that, keep an ear out for the next podcast to come. Again, thanks, Jay Chillingworth, for reminding me to get back into this and sending me messages about it. And other than that, I will catch you all later. Again, you can find me on Instagram, Facebook and YouTube, all under the DSA Gardening moniker. Um, and other than that, thanks guys for listening, and I will catch you later.